All right, so in this video, we're checking out the GEP RC Cinebot 25. And um, I know this video is like three months late. This model came out like three months ago when all the uh, sponsored videos came out. Obviously, uh, as you probably guys know, or maybe maybe don't know, don't know I don't get stuff from Gip RC anymore. They, I guess, um, blacklisted me or something. I'm not sure they don't respond to my emails anymore. So this was one that I was interested in reviewing uh, when it first came out, but um, was unable to. So actually, actually, this video is sponsored by you guys because I used up my, um, I guess, affiliate money that came from Banggood and I bought this from Banggood with that money. Um, so thank you for those of you that uh, support my channel and uh, purchase stuff from Banggood. That money is going back in the channel into in the form of this model and I actually bought the um, WT or WTFPV model. I, I'm not sure exactly what that stands for. It's the model that does not have the FPV system in it. So while this one here has the O3 camera in it, obviously the O3 air unit, which I installed myself, and we'll talk about that. Um, uh, this one just, just comes with the frame, props, motors, and the flight controller. And obviously pre-built, so ready to go and ready to put your uh, video system to it. So this one is comes in at a pretty reasonable price. It's like 189. It's not quite as cheap as the one from Emacs that I reviewed recently, the two and a half inch, um, the uh, Cine Hawk Mini. I think that one came in at like 139 or something like that. It's quite a bit cheaper, but this one is got a lot more plastic and bigger motors. We'll talk about the differences here a little bit late in the video. So there are a ton of different variants of this model. So there's the Cinebot 25 and then the Cinebot 25S. This one is the regular version, which comes with the 1404 4600 KV motors. And I believe the S version, I think S stands for Sport, is like a 1505. It's a little bit bigger motor and I think slightly lower KV. So you'll have to check the product page for those different versions to see what the specs are. They have slightly different specs, but I believe the all-in-one flight controller that's on all these is the same. It's like a G4 based, uh, it's called the Taker. And it does have the 32-bit uh, BLLE32 ESC. So whatever firmware's on here, I guess you guys are stuck on that. I have a, I have a feeling that there's gonna be another variant of this out in another batch later on because um, the BL, BL Heli 32 uh, fiasco that's going on right now. I guess uh, manufacturers can't make ESCs with that firmware anymore. Uh, so they're probably going to make a version of the Taker ESC with the uh, Blue J firmware is what I suspect. So if you're watching this in the far future and you're asking me for a CLA dump, um, you'll have to contact GEPRC. They probably have different versions for whatever different you know model you have. There's so many different variations of this one. Um, you have to check their website and contact their support for the one that for the specific version that you have. Of course, I don't know in the future if there's going to be a fourth or fifth different version of this one, so you have to obviously contact them regarding that. Now, at least for this model here, uh, there's two different PID um, tunes and two different profiles. So apparently, uh, while they've blacklisted me, they are listening to my videos. They apparently watched my video on having multiple PID profiles for different weights for the Cinewhoops, and that's very important. So they have a PID profile one, which is oddly listed as GoPro 8. Um, but this one, uh, I think that one is meant for just the O3 camera with no GoPro. There is a GoPro mount that you can install right here. And they have another profile called GoPro 10 or GoPro 12. That's a, in the second profile, which I didn't fly. That's for the extra weight of the uh, naked GoPro being mounted on here. So you can fly this with a naked GoPro if you want. And like I said, there's different variants this one. So there's the, the regular version, there's the S version with the rear motors. And then within each of those two variants, there's a bunch of different VTX versions. So they have ones with the O3 camera, they have ones with the the old school Vista, I guess they're calling it the Runcam Link now. Uh, so if you want the Runcam Link version, they have that. And then they have the analog version with the Cadex Retel camera. Obviously they have this one that I bought here with no VTX in it or FPV system at all. And, but they don't have a walk snail version and they don't have an HD zero version of this model. So they have all those different variations, but no walk snail, no HD zero. So if you're wanting to fly one of those two FPV systems, you could buy the, um, 
non or the, the the one I got here with no VTX or no uh, FPV system in it, and then install your own system in there. Obviously, you'll have to do some DIY because the cabling and such is meant for DJI O3, um, but it's possible if you have if you're a bit handy and can do some DIY stuff. So there's also one more variant. Uh, there's ones with the gray colored. Uh, camera hood and prop guards, which is the one I have here, or you can elect to go with the black color, which has the black color camera canopy and black colored plastic uh, prop guards. So quickly, just to go over what came in the box with this version, uh, you do get like a, a spare battery pad and uh, spare props and spare uh, battery strap. Um, they also include you know, extra camera canopy, which is some gray. You have the uh, GoPro mount, which is if you want to install that for the naked GoPro, that's included. They also have this um, the heat sink here, uh, which I did not install. I think this is the one that get, gets installed in the S version, and they don't install this on the non S version because it adds, adds extra weight. And uh, if you want to keep it under 250 grams, uh, get the non S version. If you get the S version, it weighs a bit more and it's going to be really hard to, to keep it under 250 grams but obviously you're going to get a bigger motor and a lot more power regarding these hq props uh i you know if you crash this at all these prop guards do have some flex and give and they will cause these to basically break the, the hq props at least these are kind of known to have uh pretty weak hubs and these um prop blades will pop off in a crash so yeah, they just include a spare but if you do crash a lot you're probably going to want to buy some more of those um, obviously you get all the spare screws and stuff in here in the in the in the in this little bag so those are all included as well and of course you get all the same documentation that you get with the uh, buy and fly version and the stickers and also there's different receiver versions as well this one here uh, came with an express lrs receiver you can buy versions with uh, TBS Crossfire or ones with no receiver at all. So lots of different versions out there. So you have to be very careful as to like where you buy it from and which version you specify. Because if you kind of just pick one at random, you may not get what you were looking for. So be aware of that. All right, so putting this together, fairly straightforward. Uh, there's six screws here, uh, two over here on each side, two over here on each side, and then uh, two over here to take the prop guard off and then that'll expose this whole bottom area where the flight controller is and then you can install the O3 air unit to the plastic bottom here. They do include nice little rubber feet here to land on which is nice which I kind of complained about the uh, Cadex uh, GoFilm didn't have there's just plastic nubs to get the wear, wear off. This, these have little rubber feet are pretty nice. Um, again if you have the heatsink version you're going to put that here uh, that will add additional weight. I think it's uh, four or five grams, so it's not insignificant. There is this rubber cover here for the O3 air unit. You do have to install it a very specific way. You can see where the uh, USB plug is right there. And then the reason they have to do it that way is that will also put the um, binding, uh, I guess it's a binding bun right there, which you can use and include a little pin uh, to uh, attach, I guess, hit that button if you need to. So that's exposed right that little area right over there. Now, obviously, getting the prop guards off is pretty easy. Um, installing the O3 area here is fairly straightforward. Same with the camera. You do run into this little area right here. The the area that's tough is back here. There's this it kind of looks like a jigsaw puzzle. This is very tricky to maneuver the uh, antenna to uh, plug into the, actually there's some antenna extenders uh, or UFL extenders that go to the, uh, attached to the end of the uh, antenna connectors here that'll then connect to the area because the distance between the, the the antenna length here to the area is a little bit short so they include a couple of extenders. But getting all of this together here is very tricky. There's no video, there's no instructions in the package. So when you take it apart the first time, be very like, make a note of like uh, how it's put together because I didn't do that and um, it took me a couple hours to figure it out uh, to how to put it back together. It's very very tricky. There's a little spot in this plastic here where you can actually mount the uh, receiver. You do have to, in mine it, it was for a reason, wasn't 
uh, when I took it apart, it wasn't mounted correctly. So I didn't know that until I figured that out later. I couldn't put this together until I realized, oh, you got to put the receiver in that little area. That And it's, and it's, the thing is, it's meant for their receiver. It's a GPRC branded ELRS receiver. If, if your receiver is a different size, it might not fit in there. And you may not be able to close this. So something to be aware of. Uh, there's a plug back here, USB-C port that goes to the flight controller, and there's a bunch of electronics inside here that will extend that to the flight controller um, because it's, there's obviously no way to reach the USB port otherwise. And then this is the uh, bind button for the, or not the bind button, the bootloader button for the flight controller. So yeah, so this whole area back here, very, very tricky to put together. So just be aware that if you buy the build it yourself version, obviously if you buy the bind and fly version, you won't have to take it apart, so this, none of this uh, applies to you. Nice little XT30 connector here built into the frame, though that will, you know, if you want to do a toilet tank mounting, you need a really long battery cord. But I'm not sure if it's going to be possible to do that here because um, the mounts here, you know, doesn't seem like there's going to be a way to turn it sideways. It would be nice in this design if they could do that. Uh, but they obviously didn't, uh, they wanted the battery to go front to back. Obviously that's just a preference thing. The plate here that everything is attached to is kind of a standard design. You know, you got one single carbon plate, it's 2.75 millimeters thick. There's no pattern here on the carbon, so I have no idea what the, which way it goes. They have the motors attached to this and then the flight controller attached to that. And then the prop guards are attached to the frame. So pretty standard design. Overall, this this um, whole, whole, overall this whole frame is pretty hefty. Uh, it's got a, quite a bit of, a lot of weight. So let me just show you how much weight difference there is here. Yeah, so just the craft by itself is 187 grams. And uh, if I look, go back to the um, Cinehawk Mini video, also another 200 inch Cinewhoop. That one has smaller motors. It's a 1303.5 motors. Um, and that one comes in 144 grams. So this one is about 43 grams, almost 44 grams heavier for the same size prop. So the uh, battery that I used is this uh, 4660, also from GetRC. It fits in pretty nicely here. That uh, all together with the battery, now we're coming in exactly 250 grams. So with this battery, you know, this is the smallest battery that they have this Pigeon site designed for. Uh, it's, I got about three and a half minutes. You could probably squeeze about four minutes out of here if you're kind of not really flying too aggressively. If you're flying more aggressively, you know, if you're trying to do acro tricks, whatever, then maybe two and a half minutes on this battery to keep it under 250 grams. If you go with a bigger battery, obviously you're going to be over the 250 gram limit. If you don't care about that, you don't care about the way, if you were looking for more power for acro and freestyle, then I would recommend getting the bigger motor version, the S version with the 1505 motors. That's going to provide you a lot more performance. Uh, but if you're looking for a lighter setup, maybe just for, you know, capturing footage, then yeah, um, go for the smaller battery and the less flight time. It is... On this battery, it is still pretty agile, even on the smaller 14 and 4 motors. Uh, definitely has more power than the Sennahawk Mini. So um, if you're looking for more power, um, go for this model. If you're looking for more flight time, then probably go for the Sennahawk model because that one, you can get a bigger battery on there and still keep it under 250 grams and get more flight time. So obviously just a little trade-offs here. Uh, it depends on what your goals are. Regarding the uh, camera mounting here it's pretty decent you do get some spare uh these rubber grommets here those are there's some spares in there and they have a tool for actually installing this they include that as well um they have this like space down here to allow airflow into the air unit down here to cool it off but it it will overheat if you do a lot of back-to-back -back batteries so you know if you're you know, flying like three four packs in a row i would recommend landing you know maybe wait like 30 seconds to a minute and then go ahead and, and, and plug in your next battery and go. Because uh, the air unit is kind of, you know, there's not a lot of airflow that's going to get down there. Even though there's a little bit of a tunnel here for airflow, it's still going to get pretty hot. So just be aware of that. But in terms of the camera vibration, it's just this tiny little thing here. And I did notice that uh, if you're flying really fast or if it's really windy, um, this will shake. Now, you'll see it in the unstabilized footage if it's shaking and vibrating. 
I flew it without an ND filter, so whether or not you call that gel or it's not really gel. You just see some shaking. And that's because uh, the wind's hitting this, and there's not a lot of mass here compared to the Simihawk model where they, they use the mass of the battery to sort of dampen this vibration. So you do see some vibrations in faster, aggressive flying and also like doing dives, that kind of thing, where there's a lot of wind hitting this. And you can see it doesn't take a lot of force to cause this to move. So a little bit of wind is going to cause this to shake a bit. Now, when you look at the stabilized footage in Gyroflow, a lot of that is kind of you know, negated through the uh, gyro's um, stabilization. But um, yeah, if, I think if you put an indie filter on here, a lot of that shaking is going to be muted by that as well. But just pointing out that this is not a mount that's going to eliminate vibrations completely, especially if you're relying on the non-stabilized footage. Um, I would recommend definitely sending this through Gyroflow to get that smoother footage if you're going to be using this model. Anyway, I think that's a cover for my video on the CineBot 25. Uh, overall, you know, I would say a uh, good model for power, good pit tunes overall. A typical Gep RC, you know, I'm, you know, they have really good pit tunes. It's pretty nice and locked in, although um, on the lighter battery, it does, you know, shake a little bit more in the wind. You know, that's just how it is uh, when you go, we have less weight. When I try to keep it anything under 250 grams, you are just, uh, you know, going to have some effect from the wind. And if you want less of that, just, you know, don't care about the uh, 250 gram limit, then just go for the bit heavier model with more power and a bigger battery. And a lot of that, uh, the effects from the wind aren't going to be any sort of an issue for you. Personally, for me, I think I would go for the Sunhawk Mini just because it's got, um, I don't really need the freestyle capability and I just want more flight time. But if that's not a thing for you, then, you know, if you want to go bigger battery, don't care about the 250 gram limit, then you know, go for the more powered uh, version with the bigger motors. I think then uh, if you're uh, someone that wants to fly really fast and aggressive on your semi whoops and do lots of freestyle, then go for the big, big motor. And, you know, I think you'll be pretty happy with that, with, uh, that setup. Anyway, I'll link this down in the video description if you guys want to check it out. That'll do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.